The Glitchpad is a new module released with the 1.1.4 update that allows us to make really wild sounds by scrubbing around audio files and playing very small looping segments at various speeds. A large 2D slider is provided to give us fun and intuitive control over our audio manipulation, making it possible to perform our glitchy sounds very easily. The glitch pad is one of our most straightforward effects with only a handful of parameters, but the output results can be really striking. The glitch pad can be found in the buffer effects section of the module's menu, since the process relies on loading an audio file into a buffer in order to get a result. I've already got an instance of this module loaded into a pedal board, alongside a file player and a randomator, each of which we'll return to in a moment. When working in the Glitchpad, you'll need to begin by loading an audio file from your project folder or some other location on your computer. With the file loaded, the waveform will display behind the pad so that you can see what location you're currently accessing. The pad itself takes up most of the module's interface and can be controlled by clicking and dragging this little circle pointer to different spots on the pad surface. The Glitchpad works by looping through a selected point in your audio file at different speeds, as determined by the X and Y positions of the pointer on the pad. The X-axis controls the loop's location in the file, with the far left representing the file's beginning, and the far right representing the file's ending. The Y-axis controls the speed, and therefore pitch, of the loop. The midpoint of the Y-axis represents the audio file's default speed, while the lower half speeds playback down, and the upper half speeds playback up. Both the X and Y axis have a range from 0 to 1000, providing a decent amount of precision over your control. The loop itself will be very, very short, typically between 10 and 100 milliseconds. This value can be controlled with the knob titled Dur for duration. Outside of the standard input, output, and volume controls, these are the only parameters used to control the glitch pad, making it one of the simplest modules in our collection. Now let's start to explore the sounds that we can get using these three parameters. First, I'll play an excerpt of the source material that I'll be using for this demonstration so that we can get a before and after comparison. I've selected a recording of my own music to avoid copyright issues, and if I play a portion of the unprocessed sound, you can hear that it's a work for string quartet and electronics. A lot happens in this file. And even just looking at the waveform, you can see that there are quieter and louder moments, points of tension, and points of reflection. I like the variety of this file, and using it as source material in the glitch pad will give us a lot of different results. Each audio file you use will result in something distinct for the glitch pad's output, and experimenting with different types of audio will help you find the right sounds for your project. Now that we've had a taste of the source audio, let's dive back into the glitch pad. With our file loaded, I'll position the pad pointer over one of the latter selections in the waveform, and I'll turn the pad on. The sound is a bit noisy and startling. If I slowly drag the pointer left and right, we'll hear our loop change as we scrub over different parts of the audio file. If I leave the pointer at a new location, it will continue to loop at that point. Now, doing my best to keep the x-axis steady, I'll drag the pointer up and down. As I do this, we can hear that the pitch of the loop climbs and falls, following the direction of the pointer along the y-axis. For a very dramatic result, I can begin to quickly move the pointer location across the entirety of the file. For more precise tuning of the X or Y axis, we can use the number boxes below the pad. If I click on the Y axis, for example, and begin hitting the up or down arrows on my keyboard, I can move the Y axis in small increments without worrying about accidentally moving the X axis at the same time, and it's easier to get precise control over the values. Finally, another way to modify the output sound is by changing the duration of the loop. 
A shorter duration tends to result in a more mechanical and unnatural sound when the loop is staying still, while a longer duration will sound more natural as more of the original audio file is played. That's really all there is to controlling the glitch pad, however there's one more feature worth making note of. Sometimes the pad interface isn't large enough for the amount of control you want over your file. For these situations, a secondary screen is accessible by clicking the Glitch Pad Pro button to the right of the pad display. The Glitch Pad Pro screen provides the same controls as the normal screen but with a much larger space to work in. I have a lot of fun working on this screen and the pad's functionality really shines when using the larger display. To end this video, let's look at controlling the pad with automation. As mentioned, we have three parameters. The x-axis, which ranges from 0.0 to 0.1000, the y-axis with the same range, and the duration knob with a range of 10 to 100. Each of these can be automated using the parameter number, and I've got a randomator loaded to demonstrate a couple of scenarios. The first scenario will use the randomator to move the pad pointer and the duration knob to random locations by sliding between them. Parameters 5 and 6 are the x and y-axis respectively, and 4 is the duration knob and you can see that I've set our random ranges to move across their potential values. We'll generate a new value every second, and we'll take the entire second to sweep to these new locations. This creates a great, chaotic sound that will produce all sorts of interesting results over time. The second scenario is almost identical to the first, however this time, instead of sliding between the locations, we'll jump immediately to the new position, and we'll generate a set of random values four times a second. Since we're not sliding to different positions, the result is a bit more jarring and much more mechanical sounding. Both scenarios create great results that could be used for a variety of situations. That's it for our introduction to the Glitchpad module. I know that you'll find exciting ways of using the effect that we haven't even dreamt of yet, and we can't wait to hear what our users make with this new tool. Thanks for watching this tutorial video. If you like what you saw, click like. If you don't, click dislike, and consider subscribing to our channel to keep up with all of our latest demonstration and tutorial videos. If you want to download a copy of our free and open source software, visit the download page provided in the link below the video. And if you believe in our project and want to show your support, consider making a one-time donation or becoming a patron to our project on Patreon. Our mission is to provide the best and most robust tool set for electronic music performance, improvisation, composition, and experimentation, and to give all of this away for free to anyone and everyone. Patronage will help us continue this project into the future and is a meaningful way to show that you believe in our vision. We hope you enjoy making music with the Music and Sound Design platform, and we'll see you soon with more software updates, tutorial videos, and demonstrations.